Hey, what is up guys? It's your boy Speed here, and today we're back with the carry tier list for 7.37b. I've been saying I'm going to do this for a while, let's get into it, and talk about what are the best and what are the worst carries of the current patch. Alright, things have actually shifted quite a lot since patch 7.37. I definitely think it was a patch that impacted the carry role pretty significantly, and so let's get into it and talk about the carry role as a whole. On top of that, go sign up to the Gamely website guys, I'm posting new content over there almost every day, and I'll see you there. So first of all, let's start with the E tier, the worst carries of the patch. First off, we have Phantom Lancer, which is really crazy to see here because not too long ago, this was an A tier carry. This is a hero that was one of the best scaling heroes in the game. But then, man, in the most recent patch, they gutted this hero like everything got nerfed. Literally almost everything good about this hero got nerfed. And uh, yeah, when that happens, the hero just falls to E and it's not good. Terrible laner and doesn't scale nearly well enough, especially in the Crimson Guard. Next up, we have Morphling. Uh, I don't think this hero actually is that bad. If you go much, much higher in MMR, if you get really good and understand the, the limits of this hero. But for the most part, I would keep Morphling in E tier. I don't think it's worth picking compared to other carries, and it's extremely difficult. We then have Terrorblade, who on the note of difficulty is extremely difficult and the payoff just isn't there. The laning stage can be powerful into very specific offlaners like Broodmother, but for the most part, it doesn't scale super, super well compared to some of the other ranged right clickers in the current meta. And as a result, it's in the E tier. And honestly, ever since they made it where Contra Image just basically can't be used to split push or at least is really bad at split pushing because it does 50% less damage when split pushing, the hero just became kind of worse. I don't know, it lost a big part about what is Terrorblade. Like this hero just was good at split pushing. You put a lot of pressure on the side lanes and now it's just it's just way worse at that, and it's kind of a shame, because honestly, I don't know, I like that version of Terrorblade, it was fun and cool. Next up in the D tier, I only have one hero, I honestly struggle to put anything else with it, and that's Templar Assassin. I do think Templar Assassin with Void Blades has some potential, it's the facet that recently got buffed or changed, uh, where meld, bonus damage, and armor reductions are applied to all enemies in the side blade spill range. So basically you can clear waves with one meld, or you can clear stacks efficiently by maxing meld. And it's pretty cool. Essentially, you only need one point in your Psyblade, you, and then you can max your nukes, and you farm really fast because the meld works on everything that Psyblade hits. So do think that there's some, some potential there with this facet if people start taking it, but with how most people are playing TA right now and the general difficulty in scaling into the late game with this hero, she is a D tier hero. Moving on to the C tier, we have Naga, just not a strong illusion hero, and Crimson is too good. We have Monkey King, he got nerfed very hard last patch. Creeps disable his tree dance now, the Simeon Stride in particular. So that was very cringe and the hero is already... It's just, a, it's just an execution hero. It's really hard. It's not even terrible, honestly. If you have the right matchups, it can dominate its lane and play fast, but... It's way too technical for the average player. No offense, guys. I just don't think it scales well enough to justify the average player's gameplay. <laughs> then we have Muerta, who I thought would be better this patch, but honestly, it's just it's just not there. The ulti is not a long enough duration. I honestly wish... What I wish they would do to this hero is increase the duration of the ulti and lower the damage. I, I think it would make the hero a lot better, a lot cooler, and a lot more uh, distinct. But I don't know. not a huge fan of Muerta. I, th I thought she was going to be good, just isn't. The other range right clickers that are super meta right now are just way better. We have Lifestealer, who scales into the late game fine, but honestly his early game got hit pretty hard. So did Radiance, and as a result, the hero fell off a little bit. We have Troll, who got nerfed in the most recent patch. They, they kind of just changed his hero around a bit, and so I don't know, the, the hero fell off. I don't see it anymore. I don't even know exactly oh, what's so terrible about it now, but I've been seeing way less Troll, uh, and it's a hard hero to play. We then have Shadow Fiend, who just got a lot of number nerfs. Basically, they made Shadowmire, his facet, way worse. They made his raises way worse in the early levels. And most importantly, they nerfed his ability to stack souls. Basically, in the past, no matter which facet you took, if you got kills, it would increase your max souls. And this was huge because that's damage, right? That is damage on the hero. But now, uh, it's just like tied to his facet, and it goes away if you die. So, yeah... That was huge. It kind of just like slaughtered the hero as a carry in my opinion. And as a mid, it made it way worse. Then we have Faceless Void, who I'm I'm really shocked to see here. The win rates are not there and I have not seen it dominating games, which is a shame because I actually thought Time Zone is really good now. Like I really do believe maybe if everyone takes Time Zone, the hero would be more OP. But I will admit, you know, in some, in some games, I'm seeing people buy Disperser, which gets you out of it. 
Boots of Baron gets you out of it, so maybe there's just too many answers, but I didn't even think people knew the answers. Like, I thought people weren't even aware of what was really good against it, and I don't think people do, so I don't know, maybe Time Zone Void is just getting griefed by Chrono uh, in terms of win rate. I, I really believe in it, and I think there's potential. We then have Animage. I don't know, I like don't see this hero. I haven't for a while. The numbers aren't good. The win rate's not good. I don't know what else to say. Then we have Spectre. This hero just got nerfed so hard. Like, I, I want to say a year ago now, and he just hasn't recovered since. Even though he's gotten some minor buffs, just really hasn't recovered since. Nor has his items, like Blade Mail, Manta, probably his two most important items, got like gutted. <laughs> and it's like, ah, oh, well, I guess Spectre is in C tier. Next up, we have Phantom Assassin. I don't like this hero. I think it's terrible, especially as you get better at Dota. I, I just would avoid it, but it's like kind of a late game carry, so it's like B tier and not C tier. Then we have Lone Druid, who there's so many, I mean, there are so many different ways to play the hero. I honestly think maybe this hero is like a high B tier if you take uh, the very standard bear with me. There's some people messing around with bear necessities, which gives Lone Druid three item slots and they're going glide near Dragonlance. And it looks pretty good. I kind of just think that bear with me is the way to go and you should just play this hero like it used to be played, which is like Diffusal Glidemere. Next up, we have Weaver. Ever since he lost Gemini attack and got a lot of number nerfs in the previous patches, he's fallen to B tier. But he's still a decent hero and scales pretty well, especially with Glymir and Shard being very powerful. We have Chaos Knight, too many number nerfs, dropped him from A to B tier, but still a solid carry. We have Razor, who I actually really like with his facet uh, Thunderhead, which makes it where when your ulti is active, your Storm Surge has double the chance to strike and has a 0.5 second cooldown. Really love this facet, love the scaling of Razor. Uh, Manta BKB into Satanic with Char, just frontline build with his fast, it's really good to me. Then we have Pudge, who's more of a support nowadays, but honestly, it's still a decent carry. You can still just go like Cloak, Ags, into Shivas with Blink, BKB, you're gonna have a lot of impact and feel pretty good. And the hero is definitely just a good pub hero due to his natural scaling and Hook being an OP ability in pubs. Then we have Juggernaut, I honestly think the better you get, the, the worse this hero gets. I think it just has this problem where like its ulti is way too hard countered by Ghost Scepter, Yule Scepter, Solar, Crimson, like, ugh. I don't know, there's too many answers to Jug, but bad players just don't buy them and so it's a B tier hero. I think the better you get, the more this is like a C tier hero. But funny enough, it's one of the top win rate carries of all carries on Dota buff, but I just can't bring myself to put it in A tier. I really just can't. We have Meepo, the Smurf hero classic, farms fast, can carry the game. It's like a fine carry. Same thing with Arc Gordon. I don't think this hero is like insanely good right now. Maybe it's better than people think, honestly, and it's just underplayed, but because like it's hard. But uh, yeah, I, I don't know. It's like it still can giga carry the game, has some insane late timings, it just shreds buildings. We then have Sniper, who I kind of thought once again could be better, could be more of a high B tier or an A tier hero. And honestly, I've seen some players have success with it in the safe lane. I do believe that Sniper carry with just like some standard Dragonlance Mask of Manus or Dragonlance Mjolnir can, or even Dragonlance Glidemere can be very powerful. This hero's landing stage is kind of insane, carry or support. And so, yeah, definitely a B tier, maybe a high B tier or even low A tier hero. Uh, I just haven't seen too much of it, so it's a little bit hard for me to put it too high for now. Then we have Drow Ranger. I think the better you get, the worse this hero becomes, the landing stage. And the landing stage, which even just got buffed, putting this hero into the B tier instead of C tier, yeah, it did get better now, and the hero is very good at scaling, and so if the enemy lacks jump, it's definitely an A-tier hero in those types of games, but on average, too exploitable, too easy to gate on, too easy to gank, farms a little slow, I don't know. But then a Ricky, who, once again, the better you get, the worse he becomes, but his shard is very good, Diffusal Blade's very good, the tempo you can play with Contract Killer is very strong in pubs, Diffusal Blade, just go kill supports off cooldown, you're gonna feel pretty good. We then have Marcy, I'm a fan of this hero in general right now, definitely think it's very powerful. Strong in aid, strong facets, the bodyguard facets, really, really cool. So a lot of potential there. Good laner. You can go Battle Fury, you can just go Armlet Ags, Armlet BKB. There's a lot of a lot of different angles on this hero as a carry, and I think it's just super stable. Then we have Wind Ranger. Talking about stable, this hero is the staple of stability. She has a dominant lane in almost every single matchup. You buy Gleibner, which is one of the best items in the game, into BKB, and you, you're basically this very strong laner and frontliner in team fights that can take out any target. So she's easily a mid B tier hero. If she wasn't so hard to play for a lot of people, I think she's easily actually an A tier hero in this patch due to her high consistency and the fact that she purchases, in my opinion, one of the best items in the game in Glidemere. We then have Abaddon, who, yeah, I'm actually putting him in B tier for carry. I think Radiance Abaddon is quite good. Radiance and a Harpoon is a lot of damage uh, and scales fine. Like, this hero is just fine and it always has a high win rate in pubs. I think it's better as a support. It's more of an A tier support in average pubs. 
but even a Sakura, I think it's a B tier hero. We then have Gyro, whose win rate is easily more of a C or a D tier hero, but there's not a shot I'm putting Gyro in, the, in that bracket. Like, this hero is conceptually, in my opinion, way too good to be low tier. Like, sure, I won't put it in A or S tier because it's not a hyper carry. It's, a, it's difficult to play, I will admit. But if you figure this hero out, if you get down the laning and the farming patterns, it scales really, really well. Axe Daedalus chunks. I, I'm even thinking about buying Gleipnir nowadays. I really believe that Gleipnir Gyro, uh, Gleipnir in a BKB is like insanely powerful. Uh, so I just, I can't put this hero lower than B tier. It's way too good. People just suck. All right, then we have Bristleback. Uh, I've been seeing a couple players make it work. Some people are going Snot Rocket. Some people are going Seeing Red. Seeing Red is typically the Axe in a Bloodstone build. Snot Rocket is more of like an Axe into Sanjin Yasha or Axe into BKB. Either way, I think the hero is actually really underrated right now. Can flash farm very hard. Can be a super dominant laner with Snot Rocket facet, which personally is what I'm a, the biggest fan of. And so yeah, I, I would I would give this hero a shot. Then we have Alchemist, who I think is just really solid right now with seed money. You can have a very dominant laning stage with double Bracer. You get super tanky. This hero actually has an HP problem. So now that Bracers give HP, I think it's actually quite nice for Alk, who just wants to be unburstable in the early game, right? This extra 100 health from having double Bracer, which is what I think you should buy with seed money, makes his laning stage much better. He's much tankier and makes this mid game because this hero's strength gain and base strength is just like, I don't know, it's just not good and the items you buy are just not good. Like, out stack gain is just so bad. So like, yeah, it, it helps out. I, I really do like that the minute 25 bracers can be super good on this hero too, even though sometimes you slot them out. Next up, we have Slark. This hero has been buffed way too much, not to be high beat here. Uh, his innate is insanely good. His fast is good. They buffed, they buffed his ulti way too much. He has one of the best shards in the game. His Ags is extremely good. He's some of the best talents in the game. Uh, his 10 talents, both of them are good. The 15 Barracuda regen is broken. Uh, both of his 20 talents are insane. The 25 talent, the uh, either of them are in, are solid. Honestly, his 25 talents are the worst out of all of them. <laughs> Funny enough, uh, but yeah, I don't know. This hero is like, it's like, it's been buffed too hard. The fact that it has a good laning stage now is just so crazy to me. I, I really am a Slark believer. Then we have Luna, whose win rate isn't nearly as high as I thought. Maybe it's because Mantis being nerfed or has been nerfed, but I don't know. I played with this hero in a game and I'm like, it just seems really good. Lunar Blessing's innate now, which is really nice. Even though it's a weaker version of what it used to be, it's kind of better because now you don't have to skill Lunar Blessing. Previously, you'd have to skill Lunar Blessing so you could use the damage to last hit deny and just farm in general. But now it's innate, right? So you just get it when you level up. And this is crazy because of the fact that, well, you just get to max your Q now. You get to skill Lucent Beam. And so you're a way better laner because you actually get to take your nuke. And when you hit level six, you don't have to be a cuck and go jungle for 48 minutes straight. You can actually skill Eclipse and kill people because you have max Q. And that's so good, guys. Like, I don't know. It's, it's so nice. On top of that, this hero has really, really good talents. She has uh, Moonglaives at 10. I'm a big fan of the Eclipse cooldown at 15. I think uh, the level 20 Moonglaives fired on Lucent Beam is a classic. Unfortunately, she lost the ability to have the Lucent Beam cooldown and the Lucent Beam fired, which is a bit of a shame. Um, and then Lucent Beam hits an additional target at 25 is cool. I don't know if it actually makes it fire four glaives. If it does, that's OP. If her talents didn't get nerfed, this hero would be high A tier. I really believe that. Then we have Ursa. Super solid right now. Battle Fairy, Blink, Bash, or BKB. I don't know. Like This hero's ever since they made his like innate different and buffed him a little bit. I, hero has good talents. Just scales well. Solid with Battle Fairy. Then we have Klinks, who's one of my favorite pub heroes in the game. Uh, what I mean by that is like, I think that how the hero is designed is extremely good for pubs because number one, it's tanky. It's a solid landing stage. So no, like it's very hard to like get stomped in the lane because the hero is just kind of a good laner and it can play far away and eat creeps to gain health. Like, so it's a good laner, very stable. Then in terms of gameplay, it can do anything. It can play like Ricky, which is very beneficial for low Mamar pubs where you just want to run around and kill all the bots 24 seven. No offense, guys, no offense. I'm not talking about you guys. I know I know no one who watches this channel is a bot. Okay, maybe some of you guys, but the point is, is that when you're playing Clinks, you can play like Ricky or you can play to flash farm. This hero, uh, especially if you go Gleipnir and the shard, can farm a really, really fast. I mean, obviously just on Maelstrom, you farm really, really fast. And so, yeah, you can also split push, you siege well, you can take Roche. This hero really does do it all. It's very stable. And so I'm definitely a fan of it. Then we have Venge. I really believe in Venge core. Like still, I'm surprised people stop picking it. I know it got nerfed a bit, like the numbers and such, but Ag's Venge is Ag's Venge. It's so good. Like, it's just so good. You get to swap people. 
die, and then you just get your spells back again. You're just chucking out a billion wave of terrors. The laning stage pretty solid. It scales well with like Ag, Sanch, and Yasha, and a butterfly. Like there's a lot of angle with Dragonlands. I don't know. I'm just a believer. Then we have Sven who got nerfed a bit. I wanted to make a quick switch around. I actually had Sven in A tier, but I really don't think he's A tier. I think he's more so an A tier support or even an S tier support, which is where I got him mixed up with. But right now as a carry, I think the hero is just better as a support, frankly. As a carry, he's still super, super solid though. Farms fast, has um, it's a very strong innate where you deal bonus damage and people are stunned, which is really cool. His ulti got buffed a couple patches ago, like a very solid carry. Then we have Wraith King who like, guys, how is Wraith King A tier? I don't even see this hero ever in my pubs. It's just like, I guess people just go on the Wraith King when they shouldn't. I don't know. How in the world is Wraith King this high win rate? It's like top three win rate on Dota buff. I actually, I actually can't understand, but I can't not put the hero that has like the second highest carry win rate in B tier. That makes no sense. But like for the longest time, for like all of Dota's existence, Wraith King is just a top five carry in terms of win rate. It just always stays there. I think it's because of ease of execution, number one, so everyone that plays Dota that has like a child and a job and a mortgage. I wonder how many of you guys have mortgages. Probably not a lot nowadays. It's like really expensive to buy a house, but that's besides the point. Wraith King is just like a stable high win rate hero. Uh, and I think it mainly comes down to ease of execution and the fact that like when you frontline, it's hyper efficient because of reincarnation and then Wraith form. Next up is Bloodseeker who has a great win rate. And honestly, I'm starting to become a fan of this hero. It's laning stage is kind of sus. Uh, he still has the healing on denies now. Uh, well, he actually got buffed really hard where his healing is much better now. It got 50% better and it works on denies. So he got a lot of buffs for the lane. It's still kind of a shardy laner. Like, honestly, I, I haven't been impressed every time I watch it. But the Ardoral Spray, which is where ruptured units are pushed away when attack, has very good win rate. Um, a big thing that they buffed is the Blood Rage Spell Amp at level 10 is 15% now. And so you're always supposed to take that. Don't be silly and take the other one. You're supposed to take Spell Amp at 10. It works with Blood Rite. It works with Ardoral Spray. It works with your ulti. But most importantly, it works with Maelstrom and Gleibnir. But actually, really, the, the big one outside of Maelstrom is the Blood Rite. And at level 15, you get Blood Rite damage and you one-shot waves with the 10 talent and the 15 talent combined. And that's really OP, being able to one-shot waves on a 12-second cooldown from out of vision. Like, that's like really, really strong. Uh, like, really strong. And giving 45% spell amp to anyone is just kind of absurd uh, it's actually some crazy number you can even just put it on heroes that like zeus uh it's really really broken honestly uh, this 10 talent some of the goofiest stuff in the game at level 20 you have spell life steal which is pretty cool i've seen some people messing around with that i've even seen like sanjin kaya with the spell life steal like they'll buy a late sanjin kaya to be tanky and the, with the spell life steal amplification and they'll buy ags which is the uh, which is like the blood mist and I've even seen some Radiance, which personally, I think Radiance Bloodseeker is like complete shit. I see why people are buying it because it's like good with attack speed because because Radiance gives damage and it's good with spell amp. But like, I don't know. I see it, but I think uh, Gleibnir is just 10 times better. Gleibnir and a Blood Rite is so high impact. It's absurd. All right, we got two more heroes. First of all, we got Lina in the A tier. Her win rate doesn't really show it. I think it's kind of a difficult hero to execute. But once again, uh, Gleibnir, broken item. She gets to buy it. Her 10 talent insane, 15 talent insane, laning state insane. Uh, I made a video on this hero, so if you really want to check out why it's so OP, I recommend you go watch that. And uh, see, I don't really want to repeat all the points that are in that video, but basically, her 15 talent gives her 60% magic resist. She hits like a truck. Thermal Runway, her facet, gives her 12 stacks and makes her hit like an absolute truck. Uh, she has a damage talent at 10. She has another basically damage talent at 20. She has a crit talent at 25, like nasty. But the most broken hero, the broken carry of the patch, and I can say this confidently, is Medusa. Medusa does it all right now. Everything, she does it all. Now, her mana shield is innate. This is huge because you don't have to skill it, right? Previously, you were squishy because you weren't skilling mana shield or you skilled it and then you couldn't farm fast. Now, she just gets a really strong version of mana shield for free, yippee! And now she has a nuke and a root instead. <laughs> so all of a sudden, Medusa just has two nukes at level four that deal like 300 or 350 damage when combined at level four, which is really stupid. I think both of her facets are extremely good, which always kind of, it's not why the hero is good, but like it helps the win rate because when both the facets are good, all the people who take the bad one on certain heroes like grief the win rate. <laughs> but yeah, this hero has two really good facets. I'm not going to cover them now. I'm just going to make a full video on Medusa probably tomorrow. And uh, yeah, I mean, really the big thing that really makes this hero good is just innate mana shield. You buy one, three branches into mana boots. You basically can't get kicked out of lane. 
you spam people out of the lane with this Mana Boots wand. Like, you just cast a bunch of nukes on them with any sort of help. It's a little hard to hit the Gorgon's Grasp without a setup. It's a little slow cast point, and that is the downside. But honestly, if you have like a Crystal Maiden, I mean, pfft, it's just, I, pfft, I mean, these lanes are like straight up unplayable. I don't know. It's way too hard. This hero does too much. And Engorge, I'm personally a much bigger fan of Engorge than Venomous Volley. Apparently, Venomous Volley has better win rate, which I kind of get because every five attacks, you do an 80 attack speed slow, which is kind of stupid because at some point of the game, you can basically make this permanent. So that's probably why the Venomous Volley scales extremely well, but so does Engorge. I don't know. They're, they're both just really, really good. So yeah, essentially, I don't know. This hero is like kind of just insane. I think Solar Crest is really broken and you just put it on this hero. Like to be fair, she doesn't use the shield, but the attack speed is insane. She also doesn't use the armor. Yeah, this hero is kind of weird. If you don't know about Medusa, she can't use Pipe, she can't use Crimson, she doesn't use Armor, and she doesn't use Magic Resist, which is really bizarre. You can't reduce Medusa's Magic Resistance. It just doesn't work. Like, it doesn't impact how much damage she takes from Mana Shield. Yeah, this hero's kind of broken. She has some really good talents as well. Her 10 talents are kind of bad, but at 15, both of them are insanely good. Mystic Snake Cooldown or Split Shot Damage Penalty. At level 20, Mystic Stone Gaze Duration or Mystic Snake Bounces are both really good. And level 25, it's just a classic split shot modifiers. But yeah, Medusa does it all. Now that Mana Shield is innate and she has two nukes in the laning stage, as well as can max out split shot by level like nine now very comfortably without feeling bad about putting no points in Mana Shield is just OP. But all right, that's going to be all for today's video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Smash the like button, subscribe to our channel, and I'll see you in the next one. And that's all. But remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below. And I'm out. Peace.